Cade Magmere and J.J. McCarthy. And having that, having said that about Michigan's offensive line is what really makes me nervous about uh, Cade McNamara. Okay. Because his production, when he – actually, when I watch the games, he's got time. And it scares me that he doesn't get better production with that amount of time that he has um, <laughs> to throw the ball. And that's something that really makes me nervous. And um, – I, I see that, and when I, you know, we're watching that talk. That's what I'm thinking about when I was watching you guys discuss that. And I, and not, and I think I like Jade. I mean, I thought Mac, uh, Cade McNamara did great last year. Just this year, it's when I watch him play, he's left a lot on the field. And I hope either one or two things happens: that he he gets it together, or they they make the move to JJ McCarthy. Yeah, but wouldn't you have to be in a situation against a good team or anybody that you're trailing or not productive on offense before you would make that move? If they continue to get leads on teams and they play from in front, then he's not going to get pulled. You know, at what well, point are you going to I, I mean, pulled? I understand. Yeah, I, well, I understand that as a, you know, looking at it from that perspective and he hasn't turned the ball over, which is, I mean, one interception, he's got that, you know, going for him, um, hasn't taken sacks, but that's partly, I mean, I think a lot to do with that offensive line as, as much as it has to do with him at least. And, um, at, you know, and that's a good point, but at the same time, when you look at the same, I mean, when you look at, who they're playing next, Northwestern. If you're going to make that change, Northwestern's the, the time to do it. You know, you have the bye week before you're going in to play Northwestern. And if he's not going to make that improvement, make steps forward, you know, what's, what's you, then you have to be, then you're looking at what's your ultimate goal for the season. Is your goal to, uh, to be 10 and 10 and two, or is your goal to, Maybe they could win the Big Ten this year, but I mean, what about the national championship? I mean, I, I don't think with with unless he's taking steps forward, there's they even have a shot. I mean, because you're looking to go against Georgia, looking to go against other teams. If they, you know, I think just just like Steve Dace said on this program, the 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 ceiling is higher with JJ McCarthy. Well, there's no question about that. Yeah, of course. So you feel if he just continues to play, continues to play like his, the, the level that he's been playing at, that they should keep him in? Well, against the defenses you just mentioned, uh, since they've played better defenses recently, since they stepped into, into the Big Ten, um, the, the Wisconsin game, the Nebraska game, he's basically completed – roughly 60 some percent of his passes and he's been throwing for about 250 yards. And I think he had three touchdowns in the uh, Wisconsin game. And uh, like you said, he turned it over for the first time against Nebraska. Well, I, I would think that if just, just play out the scenarios. Okay. They'll beat Northwestern this week. Then they play Michigan state. Let's say he has a typical Cade McNamara first half against Michigan state. He's, seven for 12 and he's thrown for a hundred yards and they're up at halftime 14 to 10. Well, he's not going to get benched. Uh, hasn't turned the ball over. They continue into the second half. They win the game 27 to 17. Okay. And, and, and then the Penn state okay. game, the same thing, you know, he's not going to get benched. I don't believe I might be wrong, but he's not going to get benched until he plays horribly or even if he's played a decent game, but they're behind and they need a spark. There was yeah, a situation. I, mean, I didn't realize. I, I thought his passing percentage, I thought it was at like 47%. I did think it was lower when I was going uh, kind of on the, that line. I didn't realize it was as high as 60%. Not super high, but it's, it's, 
Yeah, Cade McNamara against Nebraska and Wisconsin, their last two games. Um, I'm almost positive that he was well over 60%. You know, against Nebraska, let's see, he was 22 for 38. That's probably in the high 50s, something in that range. 22 for 38 for 255. Well, that's, yeah, that's pretty decent. I mean, that's not, I mean, great, great, but I mean, it got to, I don't know, that's 50 for, how did he, I thought he was at, I thought his QBR rating was like, never mind, I don't remember. Um, I would have to, I don't have those stats in front of me. Against Wisconsin, 17 for but 28 just, for 197, two touchdowns. Yeah, I was just, I was just thinking about, I thought you were, I thought you were, I, yeah, I was just thinking, well, anyway, well, yeah, I guess. I mean, that that does make a stronger point for Keith. I mean, Keith, I thought is yeah, still. I mean, fifty percent against Nebraska is still not great. And I, I just, I, I really hope that he. I'm, I mean, just as a Michigan fan, I really hope he makes some better strides, especially hitting the deep ball. Um, he's missing a lot of, a lot of things down the field. I watched a lot of the um, breakdowns. Um, they have Michigan Insider has them. And, you know, and they don't, they don't harp. And I don't, they don't mean to harp on them too bad because, they, you know, but, uh, you know, that's, I, I just, I, you know, I don't want to see that ceiling <laughs> right there. And then we go into Michi Ohio State and he's not able to, uh, not able to make the big plays for us. And that's, you know, that's, that's where I stand as a fan. Um, I think, you know, if 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 it's not going to be this year, then we might as well have McCarthy in there and get him and get as many reps uh, for him as, as we can. If if Mag if Cade McNamara isn't making forward steps, and that's what I mean, like making more progress. And and from what you said, there there may be more progress. And I may the quarterback situation at Michigan is actually interesting. Um, I don't. I think over the last two games that Ohio State has played with C.J. Stroud, that you can say J.J. McCarthy is better. Like, C.J. Stroud has been, like, every, uh, and let's just preface it with this, right? If there is a quarterback controversy at Michigan, it's a controversy in place to beat Ohio State. Like, I respect Michigan State. I respect Penn State. I respect a lot of teams all over the country and in the Big Ten, but it doesn't matter if you're not considering Ohio State. If, if everyone's being honest, that's what it comes down to. CJ Stroud is on fire. And you're talking about Cade McNamara, who is 6-0 as Michigan starter. You're going into a bye week, and people are still talking about a quarterback change. But J.J. McCarthy, I mean, he might be an upgrade as far as talent goes. We don't know anything about game management skills. We don't, we, I mean, we've seen him in kind of the oddest positions. Like you can say that he's been in the game in critical plays, but we, at, at least in my mind, if it's not garbage time, he has not completed four downs just managing the game. That seems kind of ridiculous to me. And anyone who's calling in saying, like, this is a quarterback controversy, they're thinking about Ohio State. Can we beat Ohio State? Can we, like, think about this kid. J.J. McCarthy, very skilled. They got it. But has he done anything really critically in a game that would say to you, okay, this guy can – if we need him to make a play against a team that is more talented than we are, but we just need him to make that play, 
can he do it? And I think the answer is right now, I, I'd say no. So it's an astute comment because the probability is no. Is he capable in terms of talent? Yes, he could pull off a play here and there, but the probability is no. And that's what's interesting. I feel like people are calling in comedy. I, I, I see this all over the place. It's irritating. Like, the strength, like, you got to think about the strength of this Michigan team. Solid defense, playmakers on offense, and that might sound controversial. It's not because you've had, you've had Dalen Baldwin had a breakout game, wide receiver. Roman Wilson, before he got injured, six receptions. 80 plus yards. Cornelius Johnson has had big plays. I actually kind of think this offense might be in need of a quarterback kind of like Cade McNamara, a guy who isn't flashy, who spreads the ball around, is not going to put it in harm's way, and who, honestly, if you're watching Michigan games, he, he has made more critical third down plays than we've seen in a long time in this program. And that's not to harp on J.J. McCarthy. We haven't seen him that much. Haven't seen him that much. But, like, my opinion on this whole matter is, like, if people are going to clamor for J.J. McCarthy to step in, then you need to make a case to me that he's better than C.J. Stroud. And after these last two weeks, C.J. Stroud is on fire. Like, I don't think people understand this. Ohio State was having critical, critical issues at the quarterback position, at least among the fan base. Like, people were talking all this other stuff. He gets benched, quote-unquote benched, with an arm injury. And since that point, since that whole media narrative, He's been on fire. And it's like, at least from a Michigan perspective, throwing J.J. McCarthy, a true freshman, he he might have gotten some snaps here and there in critical moments, which is interesting. That's another topic for another day. But, I mean, I, I, it, I'm looking at the guy who has game experience because that's the only chance that Michigan has, especially, I mean, we've known Ohio State, they have the best wide receiver in the wide receiver core in the country. It's not even close. So, C.J. Stroud is on fire, and I, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that whole situation? Because it's, I mean, it's kind of a, feel like this thing's heating up a little bit. Well, the earlier Michigan caller I thought was very astute, brought some great um, perspective on the offensive line performance and then into the quarterback situation. And so I thought it was a great call. Uh, but, and, and had we not been running on and on and on and on, I was going to get to another portion of that. And that's what are the expectations of the fan base and what are the expectations that it should be reasonable in this situation? Because he had mentioned trying to match up against Georgia in a playoff game. And I'm like, and again, we didn't get to that part of the discussion. I didn't respond, but Michigan should not be thinking about playoffs, <laughs> getting to the playoffs, anything no, like no, that. No. Win, win the division. Of course, win the game in front of you, which is going to lead to a division championship. But that's all that can be controlled right now is, man, if, if that team beats Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State, or at least two of the three that will place them in the Big Ten championship game, to me, that's, that's a significant accomplishment for this football team but and Mark, program. Mark, Mark. I, I agree with that. But if Michigan beats Michigan State coming up, and I think, like, no disrespect to Northwestern, but, I mean, I mean, I'd, let me just take your words. Worst team in the Big Ten, right? Like, I'd, 
I don't expect him to put up 60, but we're not going to learn anything from Northwestern. And uh, I just want to get your opinion on this. Michigan versus Michigan State. With what we have seen throughout the year, if Michigan beats Michigan State, have you learned a lot more about Michigan with comparing them to what they would do against Ohio State? If they beat Michigan State, who cares about the score? Just I actually feel like, and I think a lot of people don't want to admit this, I think Michigan could be 11-0 and going into the Ohio State game, and we really don't know if they're good. So the Penn State and Michigan State games aren't going to tell you enough. Sean, if Sean Clifford's out? Well, yeah, that's that's huge. And that's actually to, to spin this in another direction. But he's probably going to be out, though. Sure. So to spin this into another direction, this... I'm going to give it's Jim Harbaugh. This, this, is, this is a real. This is a real thing. Michigan could go eleven and zero. Like I, I know it's a sensitive. Like it, so there's a lot to be played. But there, like, there is a talent gap between Michigan and Michigan State. Penn State doesn't have a quarterback. If Sean Clifford's out, there is a very real possibility. That Michigan goes into that game eleven and zero and gets smacked by Ohio State. Sure. That that is yep on the table. So you and, are and you are what proposing that, what to be done with this quarterback situation? I'm proposing that. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think I think you go with J.J. McCarthy. I think you have to go with him. I think that there is a possibility that Cade McNamara has another level to him. But I don't think you can take that risk when you have a quarterback who has displayed the arm talent that he has so far in the season when you've given him limited reps and he just seems to be a playmaker. I think it's less of a question than people want to admit. In my opinion, I would go 50-50 into this Northwestern game over the practice rep. I think it should be a real quarterback controversy. And I'm not talking about public opinion. I'm thinking in practice and coaches, like everybody can say what they want about uh, Cade McNamara being 6-0, and and I respect him, I do. But if anyone has played sports ever sometimes you just got to put the ball in the right player's hands and I think the coaches are looking out for that and uh, from what I've seen so far limited action I'm not saying I would put JJ McCarthy as a starter but I think if you want to beat Ohio State and we've seen what C.J. Stroud has done and the defense is coming together like Mark you said this you you stabled off the haters they're coming together Ohio State is the best team in the Big Ten it's not a question they have too much talent not a question you're sitting undefeated right now on a bye week before a putrid opponent and you have a in-state rival when everyone is getting heated up for this like so 
this is so great. Like everything is it. And there is a massive talent gap between you and them. And if you beat them, you have a legitimate shot to create this national narrative to challenge Ohio State. You put that gunslinger in the pocket and you see what happens. That's my opinion. Well, fortunately for Michigan, they have either by design or just wanting to get him reps and keep him happy. They've given J.J. McCarthy reps. You know, we saw last week Penn State, once Clifford got hurt, take Juan Roberson, be completely intimidated by the situation, not prepared, not ready. Uh, J.J. McCarthy has been given the reps in key situations, like you said, in kind of awkward key situations, but in meaningful snaps. And the other question you got to ask yourself is, can we really imagine J.J. McCarthy being worse than Cade McNamara? And when I say worse, I don't mean that Cade McNamara is not doing a capable job. I just mean, do we really think J.J. McCarthy is not going to at least play at that level? Let's say J.J. McCarthy just basically replaces Cade McNamara basically statistically and in every, it's going to look different, but in terms of efficiency and explosiveness and everything, he's Cade McNamara. Well, you haven't lost anything and you've actually prepared your five-star with meaningful reps against great competition for next year. So I, I can agree with your angle on this. If, all I'm saying is if Jim Harbaugh is looking at beating Ohio State, you put J.J. McCarthy in the game as a starter. I think that we've had a lot of storylines. You know, we got that whole Michigan, Michigan State, oh, Penn State, Iowa. I think this is coming to a boiling point. And you have a Dud and CJ Stroud, who might not be the highest stud as a quarterback in college football, but he's got doesn't matter. He's got one of the most talented wide receiver rooms in the country, and gotta throw it in your playmaker's hands. So anyway, 